It's your time, South Jersey, and our time on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio for extending the play with your host, NFL insider, John McMullen. Today's program is presented by Malamut Law, Cherry Hill Disc Centers, and Dr. Charles McCabe, DelVal Insurance, and Thrive Financial Services. Now, here's John McMullen. Ah, uh, welcome in South Jersey. Another edition of Extending the Play, a little more meaningful here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio because we had the lead in uh Birds 365. You just heard uh a little bit of Zach Berman uh talking about the Eagles, the NFL draft and everything involved and that's what we are doing each and every day with Birds 365 at phillyvoice.com. YouTube.com, our, our, our new streaming show here at Jacob Media, uh, in in partnership here with AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. I'm Johnny Mack. Ryan Rothstein is here. Um, great first week, uh, Ryan, and, and we're going to extend it here locally for the fans in South Jersey, talk a bunch of NFL draft. I think we got to talk about Deshaun Watson. Man, that's a fluid situation. All the rumors. Yeah, you know, just this morning, Saturday morning, I come in. Aaron Wilson lost his job, uh, I find, uh, with the Houston Chronicle uh, over an interview he did on, I believe, Boston area radio. I think it was WEEI. But When did this news break? Because this is literal news to me right yeah. now. Um, I just saw it this morning. Oh, Evidently, wow. it broke in the last day or two uh, in the fact that Evidently, Aaron get and by the way, this grinds my gears. I don't want to go Homer Simpson on everybody, <laughs> but if something, you know, if you're paid to give your opinion, you should be able to give your opinion as Can't a radio host. Anymore. Now, I mean, we can. We're we we've been lucky enough. Sure. And, uh, I'm, you know, maybe it's because I'm not famous enough. Because the more <laughs> famous you are, um, you know, you you got to toe the line. And I'm glad, believe me, I'm glad because I want to be able to give my opinion. I'm going to give my opinion right now on this type of situation. And look, I've said it all the time, Ryan. This is this is so fluid, so open ended. I've talked about everybody connecting the dots with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, in Deshaun Watson, and it's been the Houston Chronicle. It's been Pro Football Talk. It's been Jason Lockenfora from CBS. It's it's not like just one uh, reporter or one group. And I've said, you know, from my own sources, people pretty consistently, the whispers are there. So you can talk about smoke turning into fire, whatever, whatever you want to talk about. But I, I've said pretty consistently the Eagles would love to have Deshaun Watson from a football standpoint. I, of I think, yeah, I mean, but who wouldn't? Yeah, that's like you know, there's 32 teams in this league, the vast majority, and you know who the star quarterbacks are. Um, I mean, he's number two right now, wouldn't you say, behind Mahomes? If you're if you're saying the the classic sports talk radio, if you're starting a franchise tomorrow, <laughs> who is it and why? Right, Mount Rushmore starting a franchise <laughs> yeah, quarterback. Under 30 years old. Uh, you know, but it's Patrick Mahomes, and then it's it's probably Deshaun Watson. You can throw a Josh Allen in there, maybe, but I would put Watson ahead of him. Yeah, because of the age, right, and, the age. and the factor. And that's, that's the whole part. You think, oh, we got a young guy. We got, you know, he's going to be there for 10 years, and that's what – you know, Bill Parcells, I think, the Hall of Fame coach, tells all his guys all the time when he gives them advice when they get head coaching jobs. And as Bill gets farther a- out of it, uh, obviously you don't have as many sort of Parcells acolytes. But he always gives them this list of, of sort of bullet points of advice. And one of them that's always stuck with me is three or four things happen in professional football every day that you, you don't expect to happen. And mm-hmm. if you can't handle it, you got to get another job. Well, you're sitting there. You think it's bad if you're the Houston Texans and, you know, you have a new head coach down there. You have an organization. You think it's bad. The guy doesn't want to play for you. That's bad enough. Yeah. But then you wake up one day and you go, oh, my 
there's 22 civil suits? Yeah, there's 22 masseuses, not literally, but figuratively standing over your head there. Like, just, you have to deal with that. You're putting out fires. Like, you and I talk talk about this a lot. It's a CEO job. Yeah, really you're, you're not you're not that's coaching. Such a big job. Yeah, you're not coaching. Like, and that's why I look at Sirianni, and and you know, I think you and I are on the same page about him as well. It's like he seems like a great guy. He obviously knows football. That's all well and good. Does he seem like a guy that I would hire as my president for my Fortune 500 company? He he really doesn't. He well, doesn't seem he, like a CEO. But he doesn't like he doesn't like banana routes. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the thing is, you know. The Eagles.com got a lot of traction. They did a sort of 25 minute film breakdown. So I think you got uh, a little bit of uh, input into what Nick Sirianni is going to be as a head coach from a scheme standpoint. But you're right, Nick. Uh, you're right, Ryan. I'm calling you Nick. <laughs> you can call me Nick. Uh, you, Whatever. You're, you're right in the fact that, uh, you know, he's not going to be able to sit there every day and get excited about watching film. No, those because days he's are long be, gone. Yeah, he's going to be putting out fires. Yeah. And I don't know what those fires are going to be, No, but I guarantee you they're going to exist. Yes, there will be a fire. We don't uh, know and, when or where. But. Yeah, and hopefully it's not as bad as Deshaun 22 Watson. women, 22 masseuses uh, accusing you uh, of sexual assault in a, in a civil standpoint. But... Again, this is another example of what Bill Parcells is talking about. Nobody saw this curveball coming. No. At the beginning, look, there was this consistent narrative that Jack Easterby is a knucklehead and the Houston Texans don't know what they have with Deshaun Watson and what a great guy he is. And by the way, I, I'm not... I'm not saying that's wrong. I have no idea. I don't cover the Houston Texans. He could I don't... be a great guy. It doesn't mean he's made some horrific, as maybe extreme, but some horrific mistakes. Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean, we don't know. It could be horrific, but, you know, it's. <clears throat> well, that's the exact point. Good and I always mistakes. go back to Darren Sharper, who is a guy I I covered. And if you if you said to me, pick one guy you covered over the years that's going to be in, in federal prison for rape, uh, uh, Darren Sharper wouldn't have been on the top of my list. He'd be probably last. Uh, I, I don't, I mean, that's, right. you know, I'm, I, I don't think you'll ever be in that situation where people are going to ask you that question. But my <laughs> no, point but being, yeah. my point being is I never would have, yeah, that, guessed. that yeah, yeah, I never would have guessed. So you never know where you're going to be, and, and people have personal lives, and you have no idea what's going on in their personal lives. And that's why the job is so big. That's why, hey, great, Nick Sirianni's got some energy about watching film, and he doesn't like banana routes and stick your foot in the ground, but his job is now much, much, much bigger than that kind of stuff. And we're... Uh, obviously, we're going to continue to talk about that. We're going to talk about the NFL draft. I want to get more into Deshaun Watson and the fact that Aaron Wilson, I, I mentioned, yeah. no longer has a job for giving his opinion. I, I also want to get into Jim Nagy's in some hot water for talking about implicit biases and they don't exist anymore at the quarterback position in football. So. We're going to create some controversy here on Extending oh, Play. Oh, I like it. Ryan Rothstein, and, <laughs> and who knows? You know, hopefully we'll have a job at the end of it all. But <laughs> I, I want to just, you know, for any of the listeners out there, because I didn't know exactly what went on with Wilson, so I just, you know, pulled up the story. And we don't have to get too much more into this, but I do just want to shed light for anyone listening that doesn't know. Um, Wilson was on an interview for WEEI. And he called the allegations against the quarterback a money grab. And he compared negotiations between Watson's camp and Houston attorney Tony Busby, uh, a terrorist negotiation. And basically, he's saying he doesn't buy it. I yeah. mean, the verdict still out. He gave his opinion, which, by the way, a lot of people said with Tony Busby, because Tony Busby, and I've said it, looks like an ambulance chaser. Right. Doesn't, you know, just... By the way, the two things are not ne necessarily mutually exclusive. You can be an ambulance chaser and have a a, a client case, that yeah. is telling the truth. So that is the problem. But again, mm -hmm. I always say on sports talk radio, political radio, whatever, 
if you're paid to give your opinion, you should be able to give your opinion. Unfortunately, Aaron Wilson has to straddle that line as a reporter for the Houston Chronicle. It's a difficult industry to be in, but we're going to continue to talk about this. AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio, more extending the play. we got a lot to talk about. Johnny Mack, Ryan Rostein, more after the break. All right, welcome back to the program, Extending the Play, Johnny Mack, Ryan Rothstein, AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio, first week of Spurs 365 in the books at phillyvoice.com. You can stream it anytime on youtube.com, the Jacob Media YouTube page, so everybody subscribe to that. And anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast, Apple, Spotify, Et cetera, et cetera. You had a strong first week, man. Did we? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Lane well, Johnson. we had, you know, we had a lot of uh, good guests, so I thank everybody. Lane Johnson, uh, probably most notably, uh, since he's actually on the team these days, but also, you know, some pretty big heavyweights from Zach Berman and yeah. And, and Barrett Brooks, I want to thank them for jumping on. I'm going to miss some people, but we had some great draft uh, guests. I know Matt Manicharian, everybody loved. So he's a former scout for the Saints and um, did a phenomenal job. Uh, at my buddy Ed Cratch from Sports Illustrated, I'm going to miss people. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for that first week. And it was a strong week. And uh, Ryan's a big part of it as well. He and I do the uh, the fix his show every night here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio at 7:30. So too many plugs, but yeah, too many plugs. Yeah, let's get back to the meat of the situation, Ryan, and that's uh, the Philadelphia Eagles and what's going on with Deshaun Watson. And I mentioned you know, a lot of people and Aton Shander on the middle, another plug, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, he 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 kind of lambasted me because everybody hates Mike Florio. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why? My, my, I, he's like the big heel. He um, is a heel, isn't he? Yeah, he really is a heel. I, I think. Well, a lot of it is he's insufferable, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to like, he said that so casually. Uh, he, well, I mean, I he he he's always up there on his high horse and his so uh, what? Shander saying that it's a. Um, it's clickbait or something. What's your yeah, saying? Exactly. Yeah. But the point is, the point is, like, it didn't. Mike was the latest. I, I think, I think Locke and Fora was first. And I think probably Aaron Wilson was second. And so Mike's like third or fourth in line of people saying the Eagles have interest in, in legitimate interest in, in Deshaun Watson. So. Uh, it's real. It, it's real. But I don't know. But if what does that mean? You know, sorry to cut you off. But like, what does that mean? OK, of course, the Eagles have interest, right? Like we said to start the show, Watson's a top two, three quarterback in the league. I'm sure a lot of teams have air quotes interest in him. But that doesn't mean there's going to be a trade anytime within the next year or two or ever. Right. Well, I think they're they're putting themselves in, in position to pounce. So I think that is more indicative. So I think it's come down to really Miami and the Eagles that if things go in a positive direction, those are the two teams that have put themselves in position to act immediately. So a okay. number of things, you know, to me, Carolina was was actually the one team that they had put themselves in position to make a move this year and had been a position and really were actively pursuing Deshaun Watson before everything kind of went off the rails. And that was back in it. It seems so old now, Ryan, where, you know, Houston was playing the game that we're not going to trade him. Um, but again, it seems so uh, back then, the away, yeah. yeah, back then the narrative was Deshaun doesn't want to play for the Texans. The Texans will eventually come to the conclusion like we can't repair this relationship, and and that was when the Panthers were like waiting, and they're saying, "Well, we know you're going to trade them, so just trade them." <laughs> yeah. And luckily for the Panthers, you know, the Texans were still playing that game, and they had to go in a different direction. They ultimately traded for Sam Darnold. 
So they're kind of out of it. So, you know, I don't know how many teams can wait, but the Eagles are in this weird transition phase, you know, as Jeffrey Lurie has called it, and they've assembled the three potential first-round picks for next year. So they're already in that kind of, I don't, I don't know if you want to call it a holding pattern, but well, that's kind of what 2020 is for the Eagles. Yeah, they're probably in the best situation because they have the ability to pull off a trade. Like, they have what it takes to get that trade done, but they also aren't desperate for a quarterback. Like, they're obviously fine with having Jalen Hurts as the starter this year. So they don't need to make a trade right now like Carolina made a, made a decision. All these other teams that are quarterback needy have to make moves this offseason pretty much. The Eagles are, okay, well, we have what it takes, and we're not really in a rush to do so. Yeah, but, I, you know, <laughs> you do have Jalen Hurts, and this team it just came off a season with a quarterback situation where you saw it all go bad. And part of it, at least part of it, was partially because – the quarterback, and, and, and we're talking about Carson Wentz, obviously, the quarterback thought the organization all of a sudden wasn't behind him anymore. I've talked a lot about the different personalities. I don't think Jalen Hurts is, has that type of personality. He certainly yeah. doesn't have that pedigree, so he shouldn't be coming into a situation where he says, okay, I'm the starter. You better uh, put everything behind me. But it is kind of weird just from a natural sense to say, Okay, we're going to put sort of one foot in on Jalen Hurts, but just in case you stink, we're going to keep this <laughs> yeah. foot over. I don't think that's ever the best case scenario for any NFL team. No, I agree, and and that's a point, a similar point that I've made in the past when talking about the draft with the Eagles. And maybe that's where you and I differ a little bit. Like, I completely understand why the Eagles – trade it back and partly because they want to have the weaponry so to speak to possibly make a big time trade down the road but if you want to really give Jalen Hurts a chance if you really want to call him your quarterback even just for one year go go try and build around him a little bit and I know the offensive line is always the most underrated most important area of the field the trenches are on both sides of the ball but go get a weapon like but how I, you... I guess, and this is this is, I I guess this is what I'm trying to say. Go ahead. I think it's pretty clear. The Eagles don't believe in Jalen Hurts, so if Xander is yeah. is 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 listening, clip that. <laughs> I, I think the Eagles are pretty good. They don't believe in Jalen Hurts. They can say whatever they want, but they don't believe in Jalen Hurts. You know, I I why do they just not want to believe in him? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's they, you know, you're constantly evaluating. They saw him play those four games last season. And I know a lot of fans are excited and, and they saw some positive things. And I, I certainly think it's fair to say there's a little bit more. There was a little bit more juice in the offense with Jalen Hurts than Carson Wentz. And I think that's everybody. I think that's what everybody's hanging their hat on. Yeah. And saying, well, they were better. They were improved. And they were better. They were improved. But they still weren't good. And then I think all the explanations and excuses come in. Well, the offensive line stunk and no weapons and on and on. And all that is true. But, you know, that's the problem with the NFL and the quarterback position. Like, you have to be all in. You have to be all in at the quarterback position. The Eagles just went through this with Carson Wentz. And again, it, it's different. It, there's different circumstances. The personalities are different. But at the end of the day, you still have to be all in at that position. And when if you're not all in, you're looking for the next guy. That's the bottom line to me. And by the way, I don't disagree with the Eagles. They should be looking for an upgrade. But... The quarterback's going to know that. The quarterback understands it. No matter how hard Jalen Hurts has worked, he realizes, eh, this team doesn't believe in me. I kind of look at the situation like, okay, so the Eagles and Carson Wentz were engaged. And I would even take it as far as Carson left them uh, on their wedding day at the uh, at the altar. And now you have Jalen Hurts, and you're like, well, we're not ready to get 
to, you know, I'm not ready to propose right now. I just broke up. You know, I just got left at the altar with Carson Wentz. Let me let me see what other fish are out in the sea, so to speak. Like, they're just, they just backed the Bur- Brinks truck up for Carson a couple years ago. They thought they had their forever guy, so to speak. And that wasn't the case. It ended ugly. So maybe they're just not ready to commit right away to the next, quote, franchise guy. Is that fair? Or am I really reaching? No, I I think it is fair, and I think that's what's going on, and I think that's the right thing to do. But I also don't think it's good for this organization, good for this team, that you don't have a quarterback that you believe in. That's where I think the difference is. Like, I think the fan base is is really invested in the fact that they're going to give Jalen Hurts a a season to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think the other way. I'm starting to think – while the Eagles know he's not the guy, and they're setting themselves up for next season. So you truly are in a stasis in 2021. That's where I think the disconnect is and the fact that, like, people think Jalen Hurts is really being given an opportunity. I think it's pretty clear now by the realization that this team really likes Zach Wilson but understood there's a firewall they couldn't get him. Uh, so now they're looking at the 2022 draft and whether it's trading for – a Russell Wilson trading for a, you know, hopefully a clear Deshaun Watson or somebody of that nature. I've even brought up Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay. And maybe you go the Peyton Manning route and say, hey, let's get an all-time great for two years and see if we can make a run and, and, yeah. and get to another Super Bowl. Maybe even go that route. But I, I'm pretty convinced that 2022, the only route, that isn't open is the Jalen Hurts route. Hmm. That's where I am. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting because like <laughs> this is a problem, like you said. Like I just made that analogy with with the wedding day, yada yada. But I also agree it's not good for business. Um, you have to. They're in a tough spot. Like I don't know. Give me an example, John, of a team where they weren't committed to their current quarterback, but they still gave them a legitimate chance because both can be true like fine you know what if you're not committed to Jalen Hurts long term I think that's that's fair um maybe we're asking for too much for them to say yes this is our guy we're fully invested you still need to be committed in the short term but keeping your options open for the long term well to use your comparison of you know uh being left at the altar and then not (laughs) want wanting to get back into a long-term relationship well I think that's what you are you know you might have the new girlfriend. You gotta, you gotta play that game, and you gotta go. Hey, yeah, right. I, I, I love you, honey, but you're like, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't you're know. still testing. You yeah, know, te- I, I want to go. Test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go to the bar and look, right. look for somebody better. <laughs> yeah, and but my my point with that is, she probably knows it. Like she knows you're not in. And right. Like that's my that's where I'm going with Jalen Hurts. Like he knows it. He knows. And, and the best team would be Miami, the other team constantly connected mm. to um, to Deshaun Watson with Tua. And it's even worse because he was a top-tier pick. And they're, you know. They're He's after, done down there. After one season. Done. And they're like, eh, this guy, this guy's not good enough. And, you know, the Eagles are, are in this interesting you know, situation where you have this sort of back play. And I think that's the part that's probably got people, you know, you go back to Jeffrey Lloyd, say build around Jalen Hurts, build around Jalen Hurts. Well, now I'm starting to think that that was calculated strategy to say, um, okay, let's, let's play the game. Let's play the political wins. Let's, let's do everything possible but behind the scenes, we got the deep state working for a completely, completely different narrative, and that's to get the next quarterback, whether it's a top 10 pick next year, uh, whether it's Russell Wilson, whether it's Deshaun Watson, whether it's Aaron Rodgers. Now, what, what Jalen Hurts does have, though, is the opportunity to be on the field. And if you just knock it out of the park, yeah, nobody's taking you off the field. Right. And I think, like you pointed out earlier, Jalen has, so it appears, the mental capacity and the mental toughness to 
I think he's able to say, all right, you know what? Screw Howie. Screw Jeffrey Lurie. If they're putting me on the field, that's all I need. Just put me on the field. <laughs> By the way, we, he wouldn't be the first one to say screw Howie. You <laughs> no, know, one thing about last. Birds 365, you know, and Lane Johnson talked about Zach Ertz. We know Zach Ertz isn't happy with the organization. Lane Johnson himself, you know, Jeff McClain's story, people forget. He got in a fight with Howie. A lot of people are saying, you know, I, I don't want to say um, screw Howie, but, you know, maybe, maybe the realization is – uh, you can't do anything about it, so you just do your job and yeah. you go to work. And that's that's the way Jalen Hurts has to look at it. But we'll continue this, and we'll get into more draft talk here on AM 1490. Sports betting radio extending the play. It's Birds 365 debut week. We're putting an explanation point, exclamation point on it. More Johnny Mack and Ryan Rothstein after the break. And we're back. We're back now. A little bit of a technical hiccup, but uh, extending play AM 1490 Sports a Betting Radio. As the man said, subscribe to the Jacob Media YouTube channel for all our daily program encompasses uh, not just the Eagles, but the fix with Ryan Rothstein as well. Uh, I'm on there every night at 730 Birds 365, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. You can listen live, phillyvoice.com. You can stream it. Also, The Middle with Aton and the boys. So a uh, lot of good stuff going on with the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Uh, here we're talking Eagles. We're extending the play on Birds 365. We've been talking about Jalen Hurts and uh, what the Eagles believe, what they <laughs> really don't believe in. <laughs> What they say, the old adage in the NFL, Ryan, is don't listen to what teams say. Watch what they do. And that's where I am. I'm watching what the Eagles are doing. There's too much smoke to this Deshaun Watson fire. Mm -hmm. We've talked about all the assets they have added. They got the best insurance policy. You know, it, 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 here's how I'll compare it. This is the metaphor I'll use. Okay. If you're 25, you're not thinking about getting – the best life insurance policy available. You are you think you're indestructible. You think uh, everything's going to be fine forever. You know, mm -hmm. as you start to age like me, you start thinking about things like that. You want to get these big-time insurance policies. The Eagles got a big-time insurance policy for Jalen Hurts. And again, that at least creeps in the thought that you don't think this is the guy because if you thought this was the guy, you do what Jeffrey Lurie supposedly said to do and just build up around him. You not push things back. Now, we know the salary cap issues. There's things that come into it. Mm -hmm. So the Eagles aren't in a position to do a ton when it comes to building this year because they got to take their medicine with Carson Wentz. But what they did have the availability to do – Ryan would stay at number six and get the best skill position player left on the board, whether it's Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith, whatever. Yeah. You could have built around Jalen Hurts. And evidently, eh, I'm not saying they don't want to. You know, they might get a wide receiver at 12. I think one of those guys are going to be available, Waddle or Smith. Maybe. But, you know, if you, you're sitting there at six – Common sense, yes, you have a chance to get one of the two best players, and that's off the table now. So you say the Eagles, you know, your opinion, John McMullen's opinion on the situation, the Eagles don't really believe in Jalen Hurts. So I just want to ask you, what what's the ideal situation then? And this is tough to answer, but what's the ideal situation for this season for the Philadelphia Eagles, are they saying in their minds, all right, we're not committed to Jalen Hurts, so let's just tank this year, so to speak. Maybe not intentionally, but we don't really care if we go 4-13. and 13. Well, I, I don't I, – I do think tank is too strong of yeah. a word, uh, but I, I will say that they've come to grips that they're not going to be a serious contender. I, I think that's the belief in the building. But they can, but they really, and I, I don't think they're a good team, but 
they don't stink that bad. They're in a horrible division. They can easily win this division. Don't you agree I, with I, that? I, I agree. <laughs> uh, I, in a lot of so, ways, though, uh, look, I think I I got to do the math because there's 17 games. And by the way, good job by you to go I know, for I it 13. Myself, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be so, annoying. Yeah. And no more nine and seven. So Ugh. I I think okay nine and eight winning a bad nine that's terrible. Yeah, that I don't really like is. it. I don't, I don't like, like it. it at all. I don't like it at all. I'm out on that. I I'm completely out on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but nine and eight winning like I think that's the worst case scenario for this team because nine and eight winning this crappy division. Yeah. Uh, even though the other teams are are improving, I I don't think it's going to be a good division again. So. Nine and eight winning this division. And then you have this whole thing of, well, Jalen Hurts played pretty well. It's his first year as a starter. He's going to improve. Mm -hmm. And then you have that. Which would all be fair, by the way. Well, all be fair. Completely fair. Yeah. But then you have in the back of your mind, this this isn't the guy from a skill set standpoint. This isn't Mm -hmm. the guy. We don't believe this is the guy. We want to go out and get Russell Wilson. We want to go out and get – you know, what are the Watson, top, whoever who whoever's going to be the top quarterback in the, in the yeah. draft, whether it's uh, the kid from North Carolina, he's he's, you know, the SC kid. You got uh, Spencer Rattler from Oklahoma. Somebody's mm-hmm. going to rise up of course. Uh, in, amongst that group. And it's going to be, you know, the Zach Wilson of this year's draft. So, you know, wh- that's like. That's that's a bad situation because what do you, what are you going to do at that point and say we want to go in a completely different direction at quarterback the most important position on the field even though this guy got us over five hundred this guy got us in the playoffs coming off a four win season how do you even do that I think that's the worst case scenario for the Eagles I would agree I mean that's purgatory that's you know I I related to the NBA just because that's more of my wheelhouse a little bit, but you you say, all right, you look at the Sixers pre-process, and I'm not going to get you going with the process stuff, but <laughs> they were in purgatory. They were the seventh, eighth seed constantly. They were good enough to get into the postseason, and that's really it. The ceiling was winning one playoff series. That's the worst place to be, I think, in any professional sports league. You either want to be in a position where you're in a complete rebuild, you stink, or you're competing for a championship. So, but I, I, but uh, I will say I don't think I think purgatory is real in the NBA. I don't think it's real in the NFL. So no, from my standpoint, it, it's um, you're you're forced away in, in a situation like I just described with the Eagles. You're almost forced away from doing what you want to do because it's always about. Any, any team building exercise is about evaluation, obviously, and it's a, you don't know what's going to happen. You just you just uh, you look at your options and try to make your best possible decision. Mm-hmm. I think when you bring in those outliers, and you're almost forced to, you see it around the NFL. Whether it's you know, are the Atlanta Falcons at number four? Are they forced to move on with Matt Ryan for a couple more years? So. Can they pick a quarterback or do you want to, you know, maximize what you have in Matt Ryan? To me, that's the bad situation in the NFL. You got a really good quarterback, but he's probably not good enough. And you probably know it, but you you can't go in another direction. Kirk Cousins, another guy like that. Like, yeah, I, I, my, my definition of Kirk Cousins has always been, He's probably better than your quarterback, <laughs> yeah. but he's not going to win you. He's not. He's not going to win you a Super Bowl. So I. I don't think it's full fledged purgatory because you can win in other ways. You know, one guy I didn't mention who was on Birds three sixty five was Mike Sealski, the great columnist from the Philadelphia Inquirer. He had a great point. You know, and I've mentioned this with you, and you know. If everybody's doing the same thing, so you have 32 teams doing the same thing, Mm -hmm. it boils down to who does it best. Right. So I like the teams that sort of zigzag. So maybe you win with defense. Maybe you win with a running game. It's more difficult, no question. But if you're different, if you stand out from the crowd, maybe you can find a different path. And that's where. Yeah. yeah, that's where I think it's different than the NBA, and it, there's real purgatory. But 
nonetheless, if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you have this fan, you have this plan formulated, and you can't do it because you're a little bit more successful on the field that hmm. you thought you were going to be. That to me is a bad situation. Yeah, it is, and, and I think. Like, you bring up the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan, and it just has me thinking, like, they don't know what to do, Atlanta, because the draft is not a sure thing. Like, there's no such thing as a sure bet. That's an obvious statement. So it's like you have a guy in Matt Ryan who you know is good, and it's not easy to have a good quarterback in in the NFL. You know, you have something really rare. Even if he's just average or declining later in his career, whatever it is, that's still tough to have. So do you use that fourth overall pick to go get the next guy, not knowing if he's going to be the next guy or not? Who, well, by the way, it's, it's, you know, from an odd standpoint here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio, it's very unlikely the Atlanta Falcons' next quarterback is going to be better than Matt Ryan. Exactly. Yeah, it probably won't be. No. That's a sure bet that he most likely will not be as good as Matt Ryan was at his peak. He might not be as good as Matt Ryan is this year. No. Ever. And, and by the way, that's that's a really good quarterback, and and yeah. you're you're in the difficulties. We're we're talking about Jalen Hurts here in Philadelphia. He's yeah. an unproven guy who started four NFL games. He showed some signs. He was a second round pick, fifty third overall. So I I, I mean I, I think the Eagles are are doing the right thing uh, by sort of, uh, and I don't want to call it a tank. As I said, I I call it more of a holding pattern. Uh, in 2021, and it more has to do with Carson Wentz's dead money than anything else. I mean, they have to take that medicine, uh, a a big matzo ball, as we say, the, <laughs> the the largest dead money hit in NFL history, as we've talked about ad nauseum. They have to take that medicine, and they have to get the next season when the salary cap is back up. You, you know, the pandemic most likely. Uh, Jonathan Kraft today said. You know, it's disingenuous. He went so far as to say it was disingenuous to say we're not going to have full stadiums in the fall. So Hmm. if that's the case, um, revenues are back up, salary caps back up, Eagles are flush with space, they have all these first-round picks. To me, it's abundantly clear this organization is about 2022, and this organization is about getting a quarterback in 2022. And that is, that's difficult for Jalen Hurts. That's difficult for the organization. That's difficult for the fan base to understand. And we're going to wrap it up here on Extending Play AM 1490. It's been a a good back and forth. Johnny Mack, Ryan Rothstein, we're going to put... The exclamation point of verse 365 week. More after the break. All right, welcome back. Extending the play. Johnny Mack, Ryan Rothstein, AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. Uh, Some uh, off-air comments between Ryan and myself. A little Sixers talk. I think sometimes they should record our off-air comments. They're good uh, conversations. They're good as well. In a lot of ways, I think George Hill, I want to get this in. George Hill is going to be the Sixers' most important players, not even playing, uh, trade deadline pickup. He's going to have to do things in the final five minutes of games. This is – I'm really disappointed that the Sixers did and, – and, and by the way, if you go back – and I and I know people, we're going to get back, we're going to close with the Eagles. But real quick, mm-hmm. you go back to James Harden, and maybe Houston you know, didn't like that Daryl Morey left and came to Phil. Maybe they weren't going to trade him to Philadelphia anyway. But these people who said, don't get James Harden, you should be ashamed of themselves. You <laughs> should have – you should have a scarlet letter on you for worrying about, never mind, you know, Ben Simmons, but Maxi and Thibault. Oh, you can't give these guys up. <laughs> it is. I mean, you and I were both beating the drum of go get James Harden. This is an MVP. This is a guy that's. It, well, right. You have a short shelf life with Joel Embiid. I, I mean, the health is there. The health is real. You only have a very short shelf life. You got to go for it. This is it. And I've said this to you in the past this year and other people. This isn't even a knock on Joel Embiid, but this also might be the only year that his production is at this level. 
This yeah. is an MVP yeah. level. This is 30, 11, mm. 6, a block and a half, yeah. a steal. This is this is all-time numbers for one season. He might not ever put these numbers up again, and that's not even a knock on him. So you got to go get it right now. I don't care what Brooklyn's doing. And you're right. Maybe Daryl Morey did try to make a trade with Houston, and they just were like, we're not going to help this guy out. Yeah, I, th- I think that's the case, because I do think Daryl's a smart basketball guy. But, you know, it's more of a, I, you know, you got to stop falling in love with these ordinary players and talking about things that don't matter. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and Prospects. A, and, and, a young ma- and, and, a, and a make or miss Lee. Get the guy who makes it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, and yeah. we're, you know, the Eagles uh, uh, cyclically are in a far different position than the Sixers. They were in a position where they were going for it. So I'm not I'm not going to kill the Eagles front office. They they made a mistake. And this is what Zach Berman told us on Birds 365 this week. They made a mistake, but their mistake was with evaluation. And the fact that they thought that championship window was open a little bit longer than it really was, which I completely agree with. And I also, this is not mutually exclusive, Brian. I also have no problem with it. Look, I I love when teams go for it. And that's Mm -hmm. what I'm just saying the Sixers should do. The Eagles did it. They got one. They were trying to get another one. It didn't work. You go down in the cycle and you try to go back up. And that's where we are with... I, I think the talk is, you know, Jalen Hurts is the guy to a certain segment, uh, and and Jalen Hurts is not the guy to a certain other segment, and I'm in that segment. It's got mm-hmm. nothing to do with Jalen uh, as far as his work ethic, uh, as far as what he's doing. But my, my, my bigger point and the crux of this is I think the Eagles agree with me. And that's the bigger issue. It doesn't matter what I think. Mm -hmm. I think what the Eagles show by their actions, again, not what they say, not what Jeffrey Lurie said, build around Jalen Hurts. Take those words, Brian, and look at the actions. Do those two things match up? Yeah, no, they don't. But I think the, the bottom line question is, what's the best decision? Like, does it, do you agree with what they're doing? Is that the best strategy, whether fans agree with it or not? And even I said earlier in this show, commit to them, commit to them. Let's give them a legitimate chance. But I don't even know if that's the best way to go about it. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and, and that's what it always is. I mean, you have to. You're you're at a crossroad, and you got to pick. You you're going to go right, or you're going to go left. I mean, that's yeah. that's what sports is. Right. That's that's. And that's what makes it so difficult. And sometimes, obviously, you make the right decision. Sometimes you make the wrong decision. I, I, I do think you just don't. Uh, it, but, and I think a lot of, let's be honest, I mean, fan is short for fanatic. And that's uh, fans get caught up and they say, okay, we're committed to this guy. No, you're not committed to anybody. And it's certainly not anybody who has four NFL starts. That's from the standpoint where I think the Eagles are doing something very prudent. And I think, you know, Howie Roseman has set up this safety net that if Jalen Hurts doesn't perform, the Eagles will be in in a position to do whatever they want to do. And I think that is where he deserves credit this offseason. And I get in trouble for giving Howie Roseman credit for doing anything. Where the legitimate criticism comes in, Ryan, however, is, you know, the Eagles organization also created this mess. So you can't deal the cards. You dealt yourself these horrible cards. Now you've done a pretty good job in in, in, in recovering from that bad hand, but <laughs> you had a big part of giving yourself that bad hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's you gotta look at it too this way. It's like it's completely fair to just rule last season as a dumpster fire and a lost cause. So you can't evaluate those four games, especially towards the end of the year. So it's it'd be crazy to say you know what you have more so than you don't know what you have. Yeah, I and that's, you know, and, and we really could rewind back and say, why well, isn't the head coach here? Mm-hmm. We said a little bit about Nick Sirianni. Uh, I don't. I don't think we're at the point where Nick Sirianni realizes how big this job is going to be, no. especially in this town 
with the passion, especially when you have a daily talk show, 8 to 10 with Jody Mack and John McMullen talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. In the off season, forget about in season, I mean, people pay so much attention to this team. They have so much passion for this team. I, I, you know, that's my biggest concern with any head coach, not just Nick Sirianni, but especially in this town. And everyone says the same thing. Every new coach, every first time coach says the same thing. Boy, I didn't know. I didn't understand how much other stuff right. I had to do that doesn't involve football. And that's my biggest concern. I think you're going to see a lot of growing pains with this coaching staff. And that's another example of, you know, this season not being that important because they mm-hmm. know this coaching staff is going to have growing pains as well. So only about two minutes here before we get out, just to close on for anyone that's missed your past, you know, week or so update on what the Eagles will do at 12. Uh, John McMullen, your your thoughts and what you know now for the Eagles pick. Uh, I think it's going to be cornerback or edge rusher. Uh, so I'm down. I don't think Patrick Sertain is going to be there. I know Daniel no. Daniel Jeremiah uh, was on John Clark's, my buddy John Clark's uh, podcast, and he said Patrick Sertain, I, I don't think he's going to make it to 12. So I, I sit and I look at Quiddy Pay or J.C. Horn, and I think, ooh, it'd be very unpopular. But I'm I'm starting to lean towards Quiddy Pay. Okay. I'm okay with a corner. No, that's the defensive end. The oh, corner, the defensive end. The corner Why would be J.C. Well, Horn. 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 I know J.C. Horn and Sertain are both corners. Yeah, I, uh, Caleb Farley's have it, uh, just had back surgery, so I think yeah. he's kind of pushing down the board. And then, by the way, Eagles fans, don't be depressed because I think Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith are both going to be there at 12. So they'll have the opportunity, opportunity uh, to take a wide receiver as well. We'll continue to talk about it, not only here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. Uh, Listen to Ryan every Monday through Friday on The Fix, 7 to 10. I'm there, 7.30. I'm also there every morning at phillyvoice.com, youtube.com for Birds 365. It's been a blast. It always is. Until we see you next time, keep extending that play, South Jersey. The middle. the middle. You can't have pigs in a blanket followed up by filet mignon, followed up by peach cobbler. It's too much. It's too out of control. There Are you be, kidding me? There needs to be a sense of chocolate. I, I, I don't know who this person is. Filet mignon, mignon with crown royale. <laughs> Vanilla ice cream and apple pie? You might as yes. well just kick somebody in the groin. The Middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern.